I will be presenting the Mouse's Petition by Anna Barbwald. Historical Background and Context This poem was written around the 1770s in England. During this time, there were political struggles under King George III over freedom of election, the press, freedom of speech, and the rights of commoners. More historical background and context. Barbald wrote this poem when she visited Dr. John Priestley at the University of Cambridge. She found a mouse caught in a trap that would be used in an experiment to find out what oxygen was. Poem format and rhyme scheme. Written in quatrains, stanzas with four lines each, and the rhyme scheme is an ABCB rhyme scheme, where the second and fourth line rhyme. Now the meaning of the poem. Stanza one. The speaker is a mouse who has been caught. In line one, it says, Oh, hear a pensive prisoner's prayer, which shows the mouse asking his captor to listen to his plea. Stanza two. In line four, it says, Which brings impending fate, which shows the mouse awaiting his death. This poem was written during the time of the Bastille, where captives would await the guillotine. The mouse represents the captive. Stanza three. The scientist represents the tyrant, mentioned in line two, and the mouse represents the freeborn, mentioned in line four. Stanza 4. Guiltless blood in line 1 shows the mouse saying he is innocent and undeserving of punishment. A prize so little worth in line 4 shows the mouse saying that there is no worth in killing a small mouse. Stanza 5. The word frugal in line 2 shows that the mouse is wishing for even a crumb of food. Stanza 6. Blessings widely given in line 2 refers to blessings from God. Common gifts in line 4 refers to freedom. The scientist has no right to take away freedom given by God. The mouse represents the commoners of England as both were treated unfairly. Stanza 7. Lines 1 and 2. The well-taught philosophic mind to all compassion gives, shows that the mouse is saying that if the scientist is smart, then he should be compassionate and care for all living creatures. Stanza 8. Line 1, as ancient sages taught, refers to way back in time. Lines 2 and 3, a never-dying flame, matters varying forms, refers to the idea of never truly dying, which is the belief of reincarnation. Stanza 9, again referring to reincarnation. In line 2, a brother's soul you find. The mouse is asking the scientist, what if reincarnation is true? You could be killing a friend or relative of yours. Stanza 10, in line 4, that little all to spare, the mouse is asking the scientist, why kill something so small? You do not need to sacrifice much to spare a mouse. Stanza 11. In lines 1 and 2, So may thy hospitable board with wealth and peace be crowned. The mouse is saying to the scientist, If you let me go, then good things will happen to you. The idea of karma. Stanza 12. In line 2, Men like mice may share. The mouse is asking the scientist, What if the roles reversed? What if one day you are the one trapped by a tyrant or evil king? Literary devices. The whole poem is a form of anthropomorphism, where human attributes are given to non-human creatures. Cezura, a stop or pause in a metrical line, is shown in the beginning of the poem with O, also in, fourth, in the fourth stanza, and Beware, which begins the ninth stanza. One more literary device is alliteration, which is the repeating of an initial consonant, in this case the sound of the letter P, in the first stanza. Oh, hear a pensive prisoner's prayer. And that's the end. Thank you for listening to this video.